Hey guys, thanks for tuning in to the channel. Uh, reason for doing this is that there is no one else out there that I've uh, looked all over YouTube, tried everything I could, and I could not for the life of me find any snow bike videos that were appealing to the older generation bikes. So the, let's just say the mid 2000s into the 90s, you see a lot of little uh, clips here and there, but no real tutorials on what it takes to do that. So figured I'd help you all out and <clears throat> show you what I've done to my bike to retrofit my 2001 KX250 uh, into a snow bike. So we're just building her up now and getting her ready for the season. So uh, first things first, what track kit are you going to go with? Uh, personally, I went with the long track because that's what a deal was when it came on. So I decided, hey, we're just going to throw this beast on and see how it does for a year and if we like it. And actually, I really did quite like it. Uh, so we went with a 2015 timber sled, uh, 137, came with the gas can, added a few extra storage containers on it, um, fit up really, really well, uh, not too many problems with that. Uh, there's just a few things you need to consider when putting it on these older bikes. So uh, biggest thing is that the whole fit kit idea, total joke. Uh, you know, they have them out there for selected models and stuff like that. And you got to pay the $400 plus shipping and whatever, and it is really uh, not that complicated. So we'll show you guys here uh, what we're dealing with. So as you can see, all it actually is, is just this connecting rod that goes up to where your top shop shock mount was, and then down to the bottom of the timber sled. So uh, the way I did this was we got the bottom uh, part put in. I'll talk about that in a sec. Uh, leveled out the bike where we wanted it, measured the distance between centers, and threw in, uh, took a rod, uh, drilled some holes with some bushings, put it in, and uh, perfectly fine. You can get shocks to go in there, so you get suspension plus what's on your track kit, but it's not, for my application of riding, it's not necessary. Uh, secondly, <clears throat> uh, would be the main bolt that holds the entire thing onto the bike. So uh, what we're dealing with there, it kind of looks like this. So as you can see in here, as you can see pretty well, the timber sled kits have basically two sides to it. So the way that your main uh, bolt usually goes through on your uh, older style motocross bikes and even newer is your pin goes through, your swing arm is where these are. Um, then it goes through the actual engine casing and then back to the other side of the frame and actually squeezes everything together and then your bearings in there would allow your, uh, your swing arm to pivot. So all you really have to do here is you can see this black part is what um, is actually welded onto the frame uh, or welded onto the timber sled kit itself. And these silver pieces here are the bushings. Now they have these on both sides, as you can see. So the idea here is to get your sprockets lined up. So you wanna have a clean line from your drive sprocket to your tensioner pulley, which is upside down right now. Uh, and then to your drive sprocket and then back down. So your biggest concern is making sure that these are lined up. So once you mock it up, you can actually even throw in a, a few smaller bushings with the rod, adjust it side to side until you can find out exactly where you get that perfect straight uh, chain guide or uh, chain line going. And then you actually just measure up these bushings here. And they're actually um, two diameters. So you got the outer diameter and then it goes down to what the inner diameter is uh, about halfway in. Um, and then your other bushing would be the same. So what you're wanting to do is get these measurements here and here and respectively on the other side uh, to be the right size. And then you can bolt the whole thing together and then you have a kit. Uh, it's all bolted on, good to go. Slap on your chain, throw up your brake line and bleed them and that's about it. So. Doesn't end there though. Um, now we're getting into, that's for all basic snow bike kits. Obviously the front is pretty straightforward. Uh, you got your main bolt that goes through the center as obviously as always. And then these extra clamps here for stability. So that uh, doesn't really change from bike to bike. But what does change is how they perform. Now the fuel injected are nicer as they don't uh, freeze up as often. I have had carb freezing issues. So what I've found I've had to do to make this work better are two different things. One, I actually created a carb boot so you can buy these online or make them yourself. I made mine instead of neoprene, so it's waterproof. Um, it's all zip tied on the ends as well as a friction fit, and this will keep snow and ice from building up on the carb, transferring a colder temperature in. 
Um, I also have an engine blanket, which I'll show in a later video, that covers this entire side. <clears throat> uh, so no snow can get in here once the shrouds and everything are on. It's actually really, 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 really well protected on this side. A little more difficult on the other side, given the pipe, because it is a two-stroke, which, by the way, guys, uh, 250 two-strokes absolutely have enough power to turn a long track and more than enough, uh, more than enough fun available <laughs> when you're doing that. So now this gets rid of half of the carb icing issue. Now that's going to be your biggest issue, so you really want to make sure you figure that out. Now last year I didn't do this, but this year I got a uh, thermostat, Thermobob uh, thermostat. Uh, then I run that into a bypass line, and usually what guys do are carb heaters onto here. Now this won't really work for my application because the throat distance on the carb is not enough to accept one, and uh, so I went with a bit of a different uh, idea here. Uh, what we've actually done is we've run our bypass lines from our thermostat into our air box, uh, via a, um, and goes through a little heat exchanger. So I got some copper line, ran it into the air box, uh, looped it around, brought it back out, and this is going to allow the air uh, going into the air box to be slight, or into the carb to be slightly heated, allowing the, uh, hopefully preventing any freezing or buildup of ice inside the carb. Now, I never got a lot, but it was enough to make the ride annoying. Um, so from there, that's my biggest issue I, I we needed to get on top of. So we'll see how this works. Uh, obviously, different temperatures and humidities are quite, uh, will, will have the biggest effect on it. But it will obviously come through the thermostat or the top of the engine, run through, keep the inside of there warm, much the same as a vehicle or an aircraft does when you get icing. Um, then it will run back down through here, and then we'll run the bypass right in before the uh, water pump, but after the rad. So you don't want to go on this side of the water pump because that's going to be under pressure and then you'll be fighting yourself so you want to get it on the um, inlet side of the water pump so those are the biggest major concerns otherwise uh, it's closed up the air box a little bit so these won't be visible obviously when the plastics are on but this keeps snow from coming in the sides uh, just a little bit more preventative i'm going to put some more foam in here uh, that's going to allow it just for if snow does get in there to rest on the foam and not go right onto that filter and then get sucked in and uh, cause some freezing issues so um, as I go on through this, I will keep you posted, updated, and hopefully um, anybody out there who has their own uh, older style dirt bike that they want to try putting a kit on, but they're not sure if it'll work, I'll tell you guys, it works amazing. Uh, 250s, again, have enough power. Don't let anyone tell you otherwise. Uh, 